What is up guys, my name is Gustavo from Gustavo's Finances and welcome back to my channel. So man, let me tell you about this stressful week that I had. So I had woken up on Tuesday to some horrible news. So like, when I wake up I usually check the stocks and you know how they're doing and so I noticed that Afria was down like 30% and so I'm like, why is Afria down 30%? This is crazy, like this shouldn't happen, like I lost a lot of money. Well I didn't lose but like the value of my shares went down by a lot. And so um, apparently there's two short sellers who made a report about Afria, you know, accusing them of fraudulent activities and a scheme to divert funds from investors. So like, I was like, man, this isn't good. And so I had to research what these people were, like what they were doing and like what they had said about Afria. So basically a short seller is a person who profits when a stock price goes down and so like what they were doing was trying to manipulate the stock price to go down and they succeeded so so these two, two short sellers Gabriel Grego and Nate Anderson Gabriel Grego is the owner of Quintessential Capital Management and Nate Anderson is from Hindenburg Research so these two people are actually known people who both have companies and so the fact that they released these reports you know, a lot of people actually believe them and like people panicked when they released these accusations towards Afria. One of the reports was that they accused Afria of fraudulent activities. So like they would basically steal money from investors. So people would invest in their company and they would find some way somehow to steal that money and purchase things that weren't of value and so they would keep it and pocket their money. So one of the things they were saying was that they had an abandoned building in Jamaica and so Afria actually owns a Jamaican facility and apparently these two people who went out there to research they said that they couldn't find it, that it wasn't there and they found this abandoned building that had no operations, no employees, no nothing so it was basically worthless. Also they said that Argentinian facility didn't produce what they said Afria produced. So Afria mentioned that their Argentinian facility produced about 11 million dollars worth of products and cannabis when they only actually did 430,000 worth of products. So basically what they didn't do, there's a lot of regulations and so that Argentinian facility can produce 11 million dollars worth of products and cannabis but it only produced 430 because of the regulations and all the things because even though cannabis may be legal in these places there's still a lot of things that aren't and so like they could only do so much and so like they use that to their advantage to try and tell investors who are reading their report that you know that they're they're lying to you that they're scamming you that you know they're just trying to profit off of what you put into the company and so I went onto the Yahoo board, you know, uh, if you've seen my other videos, I've shown you guys what I do on Yahoo board, that's where I find a lot of information from, and there's also a lot of comments about people just talking, talking about, hey, sell this stock, it's worthless, or there's people saying, like, hey, buy this stock, it's the best stock ever, and so I went on there, and man, there's a lot of blood on the streets, and so one of the things was, there's a famous quote by Rockefeller saying, buy when there's blood on the streets even if it's your own so yes I was bleeding too like I had lost a lot of money and with these accusations the company was gonna be investigated and I was like man like what do I do I don't want to lose all my money but like, I literally put my heart out for this company because I loved it so much and I'm like wow I can't just sell it like uh, I'll give them what they want. These short sellers want the price to go down. They manipulated the price to go down so they could profit. And so like I was like, nah, I don't want to give them that. I'm not going to just sell because that's exactly what they want. And so what I did was I did my own research. I did my due diligence. I went back. I believe the markets were actually closed on Wednesday for George Bush's funeral. And so I had that whole Wednesday to research and research and get my due diligence down about the company to make sure that what I had researched is actually true and factual. And so one of the things was that I just decided not to sell. I added $600 to my account in case I wanted to buy because the stock price really dropped guys. Like 
Um, and if the accusations were false, then that means I got a huge discount. And a lot of people were saying, oh, this is a Christmas deal, like, buy, because, you know, this is a huge discount. This stock is worth way more than where it's at. And I believe them because I'm in this company for the long term, and I do believe this is a great company as well. So what I had researched in my due diligence was that Afria had actually re released a report saying that the allegations were false and defamatory. So, you know, that released a little bit of the, the weight that was on my shoulders. But a lot of people were saying that, oh, they're just saying that so you could keep putting in money so they could steal it. You know, there's so much going on, like so much drama in this stock market, and it's crazy. Uh, the buildings that they accuse are actually fully operational. So the abandoned building and the Argentinian facility, they're both fully operational. They actually both produce cannabis and products and they both have employees. So that was good. I actually found a picture of the actual facility. And um, so the fact that Afria actually also released um, some more news saying that these people didn't even try to look for our facilities. They didn't want to find it on purpose because all they had to do was call Afria and say, hey, we want a tour, and Afria would have gave it to them. So, like, the fact that they're, they're saying all this stuff to just manipulate the price and to have weak investors, people with weak hands who can't handle their emotions and see the stock price just drop, like, rapidly like that. I mean, they're in the marijuana sector here. Like, the volatility is crazy. So, of course, things like this is going to happen, and people are going to try and, you know, profit off of people who don't really know what they're doing. Also, something that I found out was the assets in Canada alone are valued at $20. So like what that means, the assets in Canada alone put the stock price at $20 by themselves. The stock price is like at around $5 right now. So that means, you know, it still has $15 to go up with just the Canada assets alone. Like they have facility in Argentina, in Jamaica, I'm sure they have some in Europe, like they have they have their places everywhere. They're an international company. Also, Vic, the CEO, he's the CEO of the company and the management team, they bought in total 3.1 million shares alone. So they did that so that they could provide proof that, hey, we still believe in this company. This company is going to be good. So they ended up buying 3.1 million shares of their own money. And so, like, that also took off some weight off my shoulders and I was very proud to see that this company was actually just being accused so that they can manipulate the price and I didn't fall for it so I'm very grateful that I didn't do that. So on Thursday morning, like I mentioned before, I added $600 into my brokerage account. Thursday morning I got up and I saw that the stock price was around $3.97. I was like, oh my god, this is such a good deal. So I bought $100 worth. It costed me like $300, $400. And so I, ha I had also seen that Liberty was affected as well. So Liberty was like around at a dollar and it dropped down to like 60 cents. So like I was like, mm, I'm going to buy some of Liberty too. Because these companies, like I mentioned before, they're both totally awesome companies and they're they're related to each other. Like they both have people within the companies that work in Liberty and in Afria. So I bought 300 shares of Liberty for 60 cents and so I got a total of 100 shares of Afria and 300 shares of Liberty for a steal of a price. It's average down and so that made me really happy. So Gabriel Grego also made accusations again on Thursday morning when I bought my shares saying that Liberty Health Sciences is part of the scheme too, since the free and liberty are kind of related, they both have management people inside the companies and so like they both kind of like work for each other, but they don't at the same time. It's kind of weird, but it's cool. So, but yeah, he tried to manipulate that stock price too to try and get, you know, weak-handed investors to sell so that he can profit off of that. And it turns out that at the end of the Thursday, mar the market closed Afria and Liberty both ended up green. And so I was very happy to see that the people weren't manipulated by this, although a lot of them were, and people lost millions, thousands, like hundreds and thousands of dollars, like all around the world who invested in this company just for selling because they believed a short seller, like a short seller should automatically give you a reason to 
to be skeptical because they're always just trying to manipulate the stock price to go down. But my overall experience over this was crazy. Like I, I was kind of scared. Like I saw that I've lost like almost three thousand dollars, like in one day. Like I lost a lot of money, and I'm like, dang, dude. I don't know what to do, like I was scared, but you know, you're supposed to stick to the principles when you're investing. So what I mean by this is that don't sell. When you sell, that's how you lose your money because you can't just get it back. If you're staying the stock and it goes back up, you know you get your money back. So like, once you sell, you're done, like you, you lose your money completely, it's not coming back. So that's one of the rules, don't lose money in the stock market, don't sell just because the stock prices are, are very volatile. I believe that if you just do your due diligence and you do your research and you're very sure about the company that no matter what people say about it, it shouldn't affect what you think overall. Like the only person that really matters is you and how you think about the company. Not how I think about it, not what your friends think about it, it's about what you think of the company. So like why I'm talking about this is I basically want to help anyone out there who might just go into my situation because I'm pretty sure a lot of people would have sold in my position. I showed I showed some people like how, how low it went and how, how bad it looked and they're like, dude, I don't know how you do that. How are you just going to stay? How are you just going to see your money drop like that and continue to believe in this company? But like I said, you do your due diligence, you do your research, nothing else should affect that like the fundamentals of the company are still there they're still selling millions of dollars worth of products this company is big here like I'm not gonna let some short seller try and manipulate me to sell the stock just so he can profit no but that is all I have for today guys thank you very much for watching this video if it helped you or if it might help you in the future just think about this video please comment down below if you have any questions I want some like reaction from you guys. I want to know what you guys want to watch, what you guys want to see. That would really help me and it would help you guys learn as well. Um, so please leave a like, subscribe if you want to see more videos, and thank you very much. Catch you later.